John Dodson defends his title against Dagoberto Aguero. I am Andy from wagertalk.com. Welcome to Andy's Bare Knuckle Breakdown. We're going to take a look at some of the fights I have just watched weigh-ins. Weigh-ins tell us a pretty, pretty uh, accurate story with Bare Knuckle. So um, here's what we're going to be looking at for this card. We'll start uh, with... Um, We'll start with some of the the uh, the cards lower or the the fights lower on the card. We'll start with Austin Lewis and Josh Josh Ritchie. So right now, uh, these fights are on a couple of the uh, non domestics that do not have the total rounds over and under. There is a book that will have the over and unders very close to when the fights start. So within a couple hours of start time. That's where I'm going to be focusing a lot. I have one absolute best bet that is locked and loaded at Wager Talk. The rest of my plays are going to be over unders. So Austin Lewis, Josh Ritchie is going to be an under. Um, this Joshua Ritchie is well. First off, he's 0 and 4 for his amateur MMA, and then he steps up into boxing. He's yet to win. This guy's never tasted victory. And he's still at it. you got to give him credit. He's still at it because you never know. Maybe it's this time after watching weigh-ins. It is not going to be this time. Also, Lewis just is uh, – he's just he's he's just much better. Let's just – you know, he, he's, he, uh, he has a no contest strike after the bell, which <laughs> – listen – you got to applaud the aggressiveness. He's hitting guys even when, when it's not legal. So um, he's just – He's so much better. I, I I can't even begin to describe. He's more powerful. He's more polished. Um, he's going to mop up Josh Ritchie. This is one I would take the under on in case you have a Hail Mary shot. Manuel Otero and Mikey Fernier. Fernier uh, under. These are two big, big boys. Uh, Fernier, Fernier does not look like this now. He is a He's a big guy. Um, this guy, he has he fought Zach... Uh, Kalmus, I remember watching that fight. Zach Kalmus was pretty cautious in that fight. So it ends up going into the second round. My guess is you're going to get one and a half. And I think uh, Fernier and Otero are going to absolutely throw down. So Otero, this is his bare knuckle debut. And we love the unders on bare knuckle debutantes. These fights just go under because these guys come out and just swing for the fences. This guy's not used to being punched with bare knuckle fists. So uh, we're looking at the under in this one. Frank Lester and Keith Richardson. Oh, boy. Um, so Keith Richardson, his nickname is the Rockstar, and he's 22 and 11, and he's had some success in bare knuckle. Um, you know, you look at his record, and it looks pretty good. Um, I, 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 I'm really confused by him because when I look to him at uh, when I look to him at um weigh-ins he seemed a little lost um didn't know where to stand he was standing there with like his arms folded the body language was very very strange from Keith uh Keith Richardson I, I didn't get it at all so uh he's fighting Frank Lester I think this fight probably goes under Again, we've got a, a debutante here who's never fought in bare knuckle. And you've got a guy. My, my worry about this not going on is that Keith Richardson has been there, done that in bare knuckle. And so he may just stay at range and piece him up, piece him up. I, I was going to bet on this fight, but after watching Keith Richardson at weigh-ins, the body language was kind of bizarre for me. I'm out. I'm not betting this fight. Anthony Sanchez and Justin Street. Uh, Justin Street is the guy who had a fight scheduled against Matt Russo in February. That fight got canceled because Matt Russo got done with weigh-ins and then got busted later that night selling fentanyl. So Justin Street finally is going to make his bare-knuckle debut, and his nickname is The Nightmare, and The Nightmare is going night-night tomorrow. Anthony Sanchez has fought in bare-knuckle before, and... He's only one and one, but he won a split decision at BKFC 48. Uh, I He lost uh, to, to Derek Perez. You watch him, and he's just going to be light years better than Justin Street. Justin Street probably 
is going to get punched a couple times and probably take a knee, is my guess. So, um, I, I, he, Justin Street looked very, very weak. He looked pretty nervous. Um, so, I will not be betting on Justin Street. Quite the opposite. If you want to take an under just to protect yourself from the Hail Mary, by all means. But uh, I, will be, um, I'll be unju- I will be betting against Justin Street. Lorenzo Coca and Ruben War. Uh, Lorenzo Coca, um, he's like... He's the guy on this card with nothing to lose. And I mean, like, in his fighting career and in real life. This guy, like, probably lives life one day at a time. Um, sometimes that's to be admired. And I'm, I don't know where I stand on Lorenzo Coca, but this is an under. Lorenzo Coca and Ruben War almost went to war. At weigh-ins, they are going to be swinging so wild. If one of them doesn't land the knockout shot in the first minute, one of them's gassing and just going to be so tired, they're going to get knocked out or they're going to pass out. This is one of my favorite unders. If they give you to start round two, I would say no. This one, someone's going to sleep or someone's just, well, they may go to sleep either from knockout or completely passing out. Because they were way too amped up. Um, I can't wait to see what Lorenzo Coca has up his sleeve. But this guy, I don't know if you want to party with him. But if you're at a party with him, you'll probably always remember remember that party. All right, uh, Mark Entenberg versus Van Vo. Uh, Van Vo is going to get his clock cleaned uh, in this one. So Van Vo, interesting nickname, The Tactic. Another interesting thing is his haircut of choice. Each fight, he has a different one, so that's a fun little surprise. He's going with a kind of like a little half mohawk kind of thing. It's actually one of his better ones. Uh, but this guy uh, doesn't know how to win against anybody with a pulse. Um, he's lost his bare knuckle fight. Uh, congratulations, he did beat Ryan McIntosh. Ryan McIntosh is 19-34. and 34. That was in uh, an MMA fight. Then he beat Blaze Rogers, who's 0-4. Kellen Van Camp, who's 0-0. And then way back in 2008, he beat Christian Sanchez, who was 1-13. I watched Van Vo's last bare-knuckle fighting fight. It, it's he, he can't punch. He, he's he's kind of got decent cardio. I'll give him that. He lasted quite a while, but eventually when you can't punch that hard and bare-knuckle, it catches up to you, and he got knocked out. And Mark Ettenberg can punch. Uh, Mark Ettenberg will absolutely destroy him, and uh, Van Vo will probably get knocked out. I, I don't know. Maybe it goes to decision because Van Vo can he can actually move around a little bit. But it, when when you when Ettenberg realizes he's not fearful in the slightest from Van Vo's punching, he's going to absolutely pounce, and he's probably going to put Van Vo down. So uh, Van Vo. Probably uh, probably going to sleep. Got a promo code here real quick before we break down the rest of these fights. Promo code LANG7. It gets $30 off a seven-day pass. We do have a 5% UFC play that is up, as well as a bare-knuckle fighting championship. Best bet that is up, so you can get both of those, along with all of our NHL plays and NBA plays and MLB. Uh, I promise there's not an overload of plays. Um, we normally do, like, one in each sport, if that, so... Um, you can get all those plays. We got a loaded, loaded UFC card as well as bare knuckles. So um, wagertalk.com, just go to Andy Lang's profile page. No better time to jump on board. We're up 42 units in 2024. We were up 91 units in 2023. So we've shown good long-term success. We've shown really good short-term successes. We're 4-1 in 2024 in our 5% UFC plays. So take advantage of that. Promo code LANG7, $30 off a seven-day pass. Kyle McElroy and Nick Coring. So originally, I liked the under in this one. I think I'm going to back off that because Kyle McElroy, Kyle McElroy's older, doesn't move that great, but he's really long and he's got a lot of experience. Um, if you're looking for an underdog, I think you could actually do worse than Kyle McElroy. He, he, is, he is older. He's in his mid-40s. Um, but... What I like about him was he beat Richard Montano. Montano was making his bare knuckle debut, and the guy came in. I, he, he definitely came from an MMA background. He was a lot of overhands, things like that. And McElroy just didn't stay. He stayed away from the big shot, laid a jabs, jab, jabs, and then eventually caught Montano. And you see McElroy 
you know, he's lost the three before, so it was good to see him get the win. But he's fighting another guy that hasn't fought in bare knuckle. And so we could go to the under, because I, I like the under one and a half on these guys that haven't fought before. But I could absolutely see Kyle McElroy just kind of piecing him up and trying to uh, play it safe and not get clocked. Um, when you look at uh, Koreg, I mean, this guy's coming from MMA. His last three fights have lasted less than 38 seconds. So we know what he's going to do. He's probably, he's going to come out guns a blazing and go for the, go for the gusto. He's going to go for the glory hawk. And so it leads itself to an under, but if it comes out, he doesn't get that big knockout. It, Kyle McElroy is absolutely a live dog with the experience that he has. So a uh, nice little pop-up from uh, movie aliens. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, that you could do worse uh, for that one. Um, Will Santiago and James Dennis. Looks like it's off the card. That's a bummer. James Dennis was a live dog. Uh, Donald Sanchez and Dallas Davison. After watching the weigh-ins, I'm a lot more on Sanchez than I was before. I, see, Sanchez has been around a while. Look how many fights he's been in. Um, he's almost 40. He, he's got power, and he showed it in his last fight. I mean, he absolutely clocked Noah Cutter. Um, so he's won his last two bare knuckle fighting. He lost his first one and he's got, and he's, they've gone to decision. So he showed really good cardio. Um, I don't think he moves that great on his feet. Um, if you go back to some of his fights way earlier in his career, he was much faster and it makes sense, but he's added on muscle and he's added on power. Um, got good footwork, got a good guard. So he's really good. And so I did like, I did kind of like a couple things that I saw from Dallas Davison. What I liked was that, you know, even though he was, um, uh, he's, he, he lost his very first one or I'm sorry. He, he won, he won his first two. Sorry. He lost his fight twice, uh, two fights ago, but against Lloyd mix, he made it into, well, he made it to the end of the fourth round. The doctor stopped it though. It goes down to the KO. It was a huge cut across his eye. He was fine, but the cut was pretty deep. So, you got Davison who has lost two in a row here, but he moves pretty good. He he's fast. The problem is he's pretty sloppy. He's not a natural boxer. He's very very he's just sloppy. He's just a sloppy fighter. But there's no you know nowhere else to say nothing else to say about it. So I liked Sanchez before, but after weigh-ins, I love him. D Davison just looked well, little, little soft, <laughs> I guess. Uh, body shots are gonna. Probably, probably do really well in that one. So I do like Donald Sanchez. I would not take unders in this one. Sanchez is is I don't, he's not cautious, but he's technical. And Davison's got good cardio. Davison's a pretty tough guy. So um, I wouldn't take under one and a half. I'd be interested to see what happens if this one is like at three and a half. But I like Sanchez to win. And then um, for the championship, you got Dodson. Dodson's almost forty. He's three and zero. Oh. He looks great uh, in bare knuckle. And he's got a lot of unknowns with Aguero, who's only fought one time in bare knuckle, but he looked great. Really, really good reach. Um, he, he, a lot of counter strikes. He, against Chance Wilson, he was backing up, backing up, and then popping him with the jab. I don't think that's going to work against Dodson, but even at weigh-ins, man, you could see the height and the reach difference. So Aguero is interesting. He's technically 17-2 and two in boxing. Um, and bare knuckle. He did lose his last two boxing fights. And this one, again, I'm not even going to pr pronounce this guy's last name. Um, Azat. He, he got baited into a, a brawl in the second round and he didn't do well at all in the brawl style. He like, he stopped looking where he was punching. He was swinging wild. And the other guy was just absolutely blasting him. This guy may be fighting for bare knuckle, um, on the next card, so so stay tuned for that. Uh, but no, at, so as that hardly took any damage. They both got in the pocket. They were swinging. As that didn't take much damage, knocks uh, Aguero down a couple times. You saw his maturity though a lot lot better in his last fight. So should be a really really good scrap. Um, not sure exactly what my play is. It's a Dodson fight. He's knocked out um, all of his guys. But I, he's definitely never fought anybody in bare knuckle with this reach. Now, it's probably nothing that Dodson isn't ready for. But um, as far as bare knuckle guys, listen, Dodson's always going to be smaller. But Dagoberto's got six, seven inches on him, and the reach is going to be interesting. So I might lean it over in this one if it takes Dodson a, a round or two to figure it out. 
We know that Dodson's got a chin of steel. Um, I don't even know if he's been really rocked at all in bare knuckle. Or I, I, I haven't seen him cut real bad or anything. So I didn't think he got cut once, but I'm not sure if Aguero is the guy to take him down, but it's going to be a nice chess match to see what Dotson does to deal with the length. So um, I'll wait and see what the lines are on the, the over-unders uh, on that one. So quick little recap here. Uh, I like Austin Lewis to take out Josh Ritchie. That's an under. Otero and Fernier, under. Keith Richardson, Frank Lester, I'm staying away from that one. Richardson really, really confused me at Wayans. Justin Street, Sanchez, Sanchez by early KO. Coca and Ruben War, under. Entenberg and Van Vo, Entenberg by whatever he wants to do. I wouldn't take the under, though. I think Van Vo can survive a little bit. Um, Kyle McElroy, Nick Nick Curring, he might might sprinkle the underdog on, on that one. Sanchez over Davison, and then uh, Dodson Aguero. I'll just wait and see what the... Uh, if it's like over three and a half or four and a half rounds. So, all right, that's going to do it for us, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you guys follow Bare Knuckle, tell me a pick in the comment section. Or just tell me if you're actually getting anything out of this, or if you're watching Bare Knuckle. Um, and also let me know if you'd be interested in a takedown live, uh, live stream. We do live stream for all the UFC events. But if you want to live stream for Bare Knuckle, we can all watch the fights together. So let me know in the comment section. And once again, don't, use, don't forget to use the promo code LANG7. $30 off a seven-day pass. It is the best time to use this promo code. We have a 5% UFC play that is up, as well as a bare-knuckle fighting championship, as well as all of our other sports. We're up 42 units so far in 2024, and we look forward to adding to that over the next few days. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you over later.